normally, if you just do a fuel filter change. Now, is this thing, is this thing here, this lever, is it pumping pressure to push the fuel up into the filter here, yep. or is it? Yep. Okay. So we're pushing, we're pushing into this filter. Okay. Okay. Then why, why would you do it manually? Because what we're, what we're what we're going to do is we're going to one either we've run it out of fuel, okay, or two we've done fuel service, meaning we've taken this filter off, dropped it out, put a new canister in, and then we'll have to get it up. Got it. Because when okay. you because when you run it out of fuel, there's no fuel in the tank. You've got air all the way up, and then normally what I would do is I would bleed from the tank this way. So I'd have to go to my Raycor, either fill it up, or some of them has a, has a pump on top. It might be uh, a little dial about that big around. You think you can unscrew it and it will drop the canister down? No, it's actually a pump. Okay. That you can pull it out and pump, so you can pump from the tank and pump up to here. Okay. okay. If not, this little pump will pump up. It sucks. Yes. Okay. Okay. But remember, like I said in class, it is more suited for pushing than it is for pulling. Okay. Okay. So coming out of the pump, mm -hmm. going to our, our filter, and then from our filter we're coming down and on this particular model going to our high pressure pump, which is down here. Okay. okay. From our high pressure pump, we're taking it from about 70 pounds of pressure. We're pressurizing it close to 2300. It's coming through these high pressure steel lines into our injectors. All right. So now, how do you how do you get this pump here to to work? Is that where you're cranking it? Yes. Okay. Okay. So, where's my little canister at? Little black canister. Right there. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to take this filter off. Who wants to to do it? Okay. So we're going to have this collar up here that we're going to loosen up. Now it's not going to be that loose on yours. Mike. Let's, let's put that underneath. Okay. It's not going to be that loose. You may have to take a pair of channel locks and just break that loose. Undo the collar, drop the canister down. Yeah. You know, he's smart to sit there and kind of get everybody else going. You know what I mean? Okay, now what are we doing here? Okay, now what you can do is... Pour it in? No. Pull it away. Now what you can do is you can pour pour a little bit of that out, okay, and then actually look in the bottom of that canister. I see. I'm okay, and see if your filters are doing their job. Okay, you might be able, you might see little marbles rolling around in there. Can you turn it this way? Marbles. Okay, little marbles. And what are those marbles? Water. You, water. Okay, you talk about water. Okay. Okay. You'll, not real marbles. <laughs> not, not real <laughs> marbles, little balls rolling around, yeah. but it was you could you could tell is your ray corp doing its job. Mm -hmm. Okay. See if there's any debris in there. Mm -hmm. All right. No, it looks good. Yeah. Okay. Now this little filter, and we're not done yet. Okay. Okay. Is this unscrewed? So you're gonna empty that out for all time. Yep, empty it out, take Did a little rag, stick just, it in there, clean it out. Good. Do you okay. unscrew this or just, just pull it pull down? That's it. Okay. And that looks filter. good. Okay. Yeah. Nice and it it and may the look good. Goes around that little center lip then. Or well, so well, well, well. There is an O-ring in here. That's going to come with oh, it. That's, so okay. that's not going to be a concern. Okay. 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 The concern's going to be is, and it just pops right back up inside there. Again, if you're going to go through the hassle of doing this, here you go. Okay. Is you're going to replace that filter? Now, sometimes if you do get a bad slug of, of fuel and you've already used up your onboard spare, you may have to use it again. Okay, mm -hmm. This is one of those where you want filter fuel, okay, not just any fuel, okay, because it'll do damage to your injectors and your injection pump. So you would clean that somehow then? You would just like flush it? Clean it, maybe maybe knock the big stuff off of it and, and put it back in there. And, be, and because you do have a bad fuel tank, you've got a bad slug somewhere, is that this may be a continuous process till you get back in, okay? But you never want to run. I mean, you're getting ahead of me. Just take it off, please. Thank you. Uh, you never want to run without a fuel filter, okay? Now, in this fuel filter housing, there's an O-ring in here, mm -hmm. okay? And I always recommend because the O-ring is sold separately, one each, okay? I always recommend having one one fuel filter, two O-rings. Okay, because sometimes I've been doing this a while. You're talking about the <clears throat> solder one, right? Yes, this O-ring in here. Yeah. Because I've 
screwed up, messed up, lost it, cut it, okay? I have a second one, all right? Also, sometimes is that O-ring may not be here. It may be stuck up inside in this groove. Mm -hmm. So you always want to check and make sure that you get that O-ring out. Okay, once you've done that, put your new O-ring on, slide it back up inside. Now, in some applications, you may not be able to do this. You may not be able to put this, this filter in. Why not? And then slide this canister up because, because of room the, location. Well, this hose may be in the way. Oh, okay. yeah. There may be a a, uh, a hot water hose running through here. Mm -hmm. So what you may have to do is do a combination. Yeah. Put this in there. Sit it up inside. Pop it in place. And then install it. Finger tight. And all you're going to do is just take it finger tight. Okay. And that's it. Okay. Now what we're going to do is because now we have an empty container, we have an empty, uh, is we have to bleed this now. Right. So, if, so if you would, somewhere there's a 10 millimeter wrench. Okay, and this is one of these. One of these two can be either one of these can be used. I prefer using this one. Okay, and why is that? Just because it's it's out there in the front. And what is this? Is this for bleeding it? This, you is, gonna... this is for, for bleeding it. So if you would go and take that screw all the way out, all the way out. Okay. Boy, you know, I'll bet you this is a lot cleaner than mine is going to be. <laughs> Okay, so you're going to have that have copper access. washer in there. That copper washer is usually good for two or three uses. Okay. Okay, so you may want to keep an extra one an extra one on board. Now, that is not just any ordinary bolt. It's got okay. a hole in it. This is a special bleed bolt. And what it does is it has a hole through the center of the bolt. Mm. Uh, okay. 3D. <laughs> okay. And then it also has a hole in the side. So what that allows you to do is, is you don't have to take this bolt all the way out. What you can do is you can screw it or un unscrew it just until you uncover that hole. And I will tell you from the previous little demonstration we had, a uh, young lady got overzealous with the hand pumping and sprayed herself with diesel fuel. <coughs> okay, it will spray out at you. Okay, okay. I got a face in. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do, pump back here? Yep. So that's when you know you're done though, as soon as the fuel comes squirting out, then you've gotten all the air out. You, you've got a majority of the air out. Okay. So you want to go a little longer. Go ahead and pump some. Okay. Can you see it going through the tube here? Yeah. Steel tube? Mm -hmm. Can't see anything there. No, we're not talking about. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. oh, we got it. Okay. It's working. As soon as we looked okay. away. <clears throat> now what you can do? Now that you've got fluid up to here, <laughs> you can tighten it down. Not yet. Screw it down and turn off a little bit. So you're not uh, spraying everywhere. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and pump it. And now what we can see is uh, we'll see okay. good clean fuel, and we may see some bubbles. Okay, so keep pumping, keep pumping. Okay, we got good clean fuel. Tighten, snug. That's it. Okay, because this is a steel bolt in aluminum, it's real easy to strip it out. So don't go gorilla tight on it. Okay. okay. Now you mentioned this one instead of this one. Does this one have a hole in it too? Yes. And why this one instead of this one? Access. This one looks like it. Well, going because in. this is because, because this is coming it's a in further on the system. Is, this further is, down. Well, okay. this this is just coming out. Okay. Okay. And most of the times when I when I get to a bolt that Phillips head is stripped out. That's all rounded off because somebody only had a pair of pliers yeah. or or that whatever. Nice. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, okay, that makes sense. All right, so now that it, everything's all tight, you're going to continue to pump it up a little bit. Get a little pressure. This is, you probably won't, won't feel any pressure. Mm -hmm. Then what you're going to do is you're going to start the engine, and you're going to give it some RPM. 
Okay, so you're going to go back. After it starts, you give it an RPM, you mean? Yep, yeah, after you're, yeah. you're, you're going to start it, you give it some RPM and bring it up. And she's going to belch and cough and everything else. Run across the occasion to where you actually run it out of fuel. Okay, we just did a quick filter change. Okay. okay. If for some reason you're, you know, you borrow your cousin's boat and you're out in the middle of Chesapeake Bay and you don't know where the engine is, find the engine. Okay. It's <laughs> a good thing to know. Okay. So the fuel tank, okay, yeah. you're going to have to bleed it up to here, bleed it up to here. Mm -hmm. Now we have to bleed the injectors because we've got air in these lines. Okay. And we can sit here and crank and crank and crank all day long. <laughs> now, let me, let me back up a minute here. Okay. Is that if, if you bleed it, and you crank it and it doesn't start to, to start and kick and everything else. Stop, close your through hole. What's the through hole? What do you mean close the it? Water. The, the water. water. The water coming in. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Close, yeah. Close, about that. yeah. close your through hole and then start it. Okay. Okay, if you, have, if you have to crank more than 30 seconds and she's not taking off, stop, close the through hole, take a step back. Okay, and then start the process. You may not have to bleed it, it'll just take longer to crank it, mm -hmm. okay, to get her going. But now that we've run her out of fuel, we do the same process. We bleed it up to here, and our next step is to bleed the high pressure line. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a 17 millimeter on this particular engine, and we're going to loosen these two nuts up back here. Those are where the fuel is coming this, in. This is where the fuel is coming into okay. the injectors. And you're going to loosen it to, so that the Come fuel... Come over here. Come over here. <laughs> right so that the here. fuel uh, or the air can come out right so until you see fuel. Right down here. That one. Gotcha. Okay. So, so you can get the air out. For us one cylinders, we only just point to one. <laughs> <laughs> so, all we're, so what we're going to do is take a 17 millimeter, which is one of the wrenches you want to have on your boat, Loosen that up a little bit, about a turn. Yeah, yeah. This is like my boat. Plenty yeah. of room. Okay. <laughs> Even with it sitting here. But what? But what you want to do is you want to loosen it up a little bit to where at least you can move that pipe. If you can move that pipe, then it's open enough. Okay. Oh, I see. So then, once you got to this step, you're gonna close your through hole. Okay. You're going to have somebody else start, turn the engine over, and give it full fuel. Because <clears throat> what you want to do is you want to open up the rack in the injection pump to start moving that fuel through. Because the air is <clears throat> going to come out through here, yes. so that that's going to cause and the so, fuel to be able to And move. so what will ha happen is, is they'll be cranking it, and you'll actually see air bubbles pop out of here, and then it'll start spit out. Okay. Once, once it starts to spit out, stop. Tighten it. Tighten these. Open your through hole. Yeah. Again, start the engine, give it some fuel, and then once it takes off, bring it back down to idle. Now, my recommendation is, through experience, is that once you get it to idle, okay, and you're going to start to clean up and everything, put the beer cans away, you're going to, depending on how your boat is pulled in, is it bow in, okay, then what you want to do is you want to go reverse, if it's stern in, you want to go forward, about 800 to 1,000 RPM in gear. Because what you want to do is it load it up and you want to push fuel, fuel through. You haven't gotten all the air out. I guarantee it. Okay, because this, this has happened to me. Is that I've, I've actually had that engine running with no fuel to it for 30 minutes. Hmm. Okay, at idle, these engines sip fuel. All right, and the only reason why I shut it down is because I didn't have cooling water to it and the head was starting to get hot, all right? But this engine will sit here and run all day long, almost, all right? Mm -hmm. So my recommendation is you put it in gear because it's seeing a load. It's putting more fuel through the system, and it's moving all the little air bubbles out because what gets dangerous is when you stop the engine and then all those little... Become a big one. Become a big one. Mm -hmm. That's a problem. The diesel, then you have to start all over again. These will, these will self-bleed a little bit, okay, mm -hmm. but not a lot. All right, so I say always put it in gear, 800 to 1,000 RPM, and let it run, because it happened to me. It so was like 10 minutes, 15 minutes. 10 or 15 minutes, whatever it, it takes to clean up, because smooth out. I had it. Well, well, You'll see it's it. going to smooth out, but it's, you just want to make sure that you run fuel through it. 
That's happened to me. Two o'clock on a Friday afternoon. Anybody left Chicago at two o'clock in the afternoon? <laughs> they had a nice drive. Okay. <laughs> Because it was Friday, it was hot, I had a date that night, I was wanting to get back to Milwaukee and put my diesel fuel behind my ears, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, and I get just to the north side, and the owner calls me, because as I was getting off the boat, the wife and kids were getting on, and he was going out. Well, he just made it to the jetty at, the, at, at Burnham when the engine died, because I skipped the step. So guess what? On the north side, having that nice drive out... I had to turn around and take that nice drive back into town and meet him at the dock. And needless to say, he wasn't too happy with me. So just by experience, let it run, clean up, pick up your tools and everything else, and it should be done. Bring it back to idle, turn the engine off, start it again, and she should fire right off. Okay? If you're just doing the filter change, you don't have to do it. Nope. This. If you're just That's doing just a, when you told me about fuel. Right. Okay. When you when you're running out of fuel, your cousin uses your boat, the kids. <clears throat> now if you're changing your ray car, can you avoid going through this just by filling it? It's it's a fifty fifty chance. Okay, I can't say yes or no. Uh, but I would recommend running the engine. If you just change your ray core, mm -hmm. then I would run the engine and make sure you get all the air out. Right. Run it or, for a while before you go it, out there. It, okay. In gear because you want to move that fuel. Mm -hmm. Okay. In gear. Tied to the dock. This is a leak <laughs> over here. Is that what we're seeing? Uh, air bubbles coming it out. It could be a poss possible oil leak. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Or uh, I mean, in this, in this hose here, it's been bubbling since. Um, well, it could be that this isn't very tight either. Oh. Oh, so air is getting sucked in from some other place. Got it. Right. Okay. Okay. Now I saw you doing something with this thing with somebody else. Well, this we were we were we were we were my my uh, my ne my nemesis was here earlier uh, <laughs> that that he brought up something. What this is is this is a crankcase ventilation system. Okay, to where we want to pull vapors out of the crankcase. Okay, we don't want to have air in there because inside the crankcase we have air, we have fuel, and we have heat. In large diesel engines, it's, it's very likely, if you have that combination, for the crankcase to explode. Okay, I actually had one explode on me when I was 18 years old. Okay? Hmm. And just as I walked past the flywheel, the lower connecting rod came out of the engine, and the connecting rod was as tall as I was. Okay, needless to say, it was not a good day. All right, but what we're doing is we're taking the, the air out of the crankcase and we're recirculating back through here. Mm -hmm. On this particular engine, what is here is a baffle. So basically, the, the, the air comes the air comes out of the engine. Go this way. The air comes out of the engine, goes around this baffle, comes down, goes around this baffle, and comes out. And when it comes out, we want to have relatively clean air. Any oil vapors or mist that would be in that air gets trapped in this baffle. On that engine over there, if you look on top, that little round piece on top of the valve cover. This one? Right there. Thank you, Mana White. Uh, that inside of there is a wire mesh screen that traps the vapors. So it's actually a oil, se uh, well, a air, air oil separator. Will, mine ha will my old engine have one of those? Too? Probably not. Okay. 